Alright guys, this is Nate, welcome back. We are going through Cura engine settings in the Repetier Host program. Uh, you don't have to be connected to a, a 3D printer or anything like that at the moment. Um, so we're going to start by adding an object just so we have something visible that we can see is responding to the setting changes. So opening up that lantern that I had made earlier, um, we're going to slice it up and see what happens. Um, your settings tab, configuration, we're going to start by going over filament. It's probably the easiest and the shortest, so let's start with that. When you are on a setting, let's say reach to a 5, you'll notice that these actually change. Filament diameter, obvious, right? Flow percentage. Um, this can be changed on the fly in a lot of different areas, but that should be pretty obvious. 205, bed temperature 0. So when you save these, you're going to have to rename it so that it matches what, you're, what you've changed. Minimum fan cooling. Um, the fan is all about using the D9 here, the D9 pinouts. You can uh, pulse width modulate uh, variable speeds from the fan for the first layer versus the second and third layer, yada, yada, yada. Minimum layer time means that um, the fan has to be on during um, your print. Uh, it will slow down your speeds and it will keep the fan on. No, actually this setting is not about the fan. This setting specifically is that it will slow down your print if you're doing just a tiny little spot on a layer, and it, like a spire let's say. It will take 10 full seconds to do that tiny little spot so it will go incredibly slow because it wants to try to give the filament enough time to cool. Um, Alright, so that's filament. It's pretty straightforward. There's not a lot to it. If you do have a bed, all it does is just change your temperature there. You can save it when you make changes. Save as something different. Alright, that is the filament setting. Super easy. Print settings, on the other hand, are far more complicated. Um, so if you're on, let's just say Shell 2, right? Speed and quality. Um, this is going to give you from 30 to 60. It's going to give you a variety um, that you can shift between 30 to 60 over here, right? So you can change uh, kind of your final slice to make sure it matches. Um, travel speed is when it's not printing. It's moving from position to position, first layer, obviously. You want to keep that slower. I would even say 20 to 30 would probably be more sound, maybe even 15. That first layer is uber critical. Make sure you go slow on it. Outer perimeter, inner perimeter, you know, that's like your shells. Um, and since your shells are going to be based on your structure tab, we'll get to that. Infill is inside of your shells if you're doing something solid, how fast that goes. You can generally do infill a little faster. Um, skin infill, uh, that looks like a new setting. I haven't looked into that yet. These are your quality. Now quality is really just is layer thickness. So you can set up what your default quality is going to be. You can create new quality settings. So each one of these, and they can be repositioned so that they show up over here, over here in different orders. Um, 0.5 is about the thinnest that I believe that the reach is really capable of doing um, with any level of consistency. You got to be really careful at that though. 0.1 works great, 0.2 works great, 0.3 you start having the, the challenge of a lot of heat is being dumped out on the bed, anything thicker, and you're dumping out so much molten plastic that warping becomes the problem. So you'll set these up, typically if you're printing at like 0.2, which is probably industry standard, you name it, your layer height is going to be that, but your first layer is going to be a little thicker so that it will extrude more material. You can also do a percentage of that material. Maybe this would be 0.25, so it squishes more. You can up this to even higher quantities, but don't get ridiculous with these numbers. 0.3 maybe a little bit on the higher thickness of the first layer. All right, so that's uh, speed and quality. In structures, um, let's see, your infill, shelf thickness, if you're using a 0.4 nozzle, obviously that's two passes. Top, bottom, this is how many layers, so if you're doing a 0.2 layer thickness, they're going to do 
four solid layers at point eight or four solid layers at point two would be point eight so they're gonna make those solid but keep in mind that if your first layer is point three that could throw the numbers off and it may try to jump add one extra or remove one extra infill overlap um, a lot of these are defined um, I believe that has to do with how far the infill goes over the perimeter oh it says right there yeah solid top infill solid bottom so if you're doing a base you obviously don't want a solid top um, all these will then be saved when you make changes or save as a new configuration so if I load base mode you'll see that solid top is removed also um, in base mode under extrusions you'll notice it says spiralized contour if I go to a different setting like back to two spiralized contour is removed okay so back to structures infill pattern grids you know there's all these different settings that you can choose to modify this overhang uh, that means your support is like lattice or scaffolding that builds up below your print to help support overhangs fill them out um, Skirt and brim. Skirt and brim. That is, a skirt is like a little line of a loop that's drawn around your print to kind of get the plastic flowing. Usually one or two is sufficient. A brim is used where it's attached to your print so that it'll help the print stick. Now you'll choose your um, adhesion type. That's where your skirt or your brim and raft is. So that helps your print stick. Um, skirt is automatically applied to it so those are two different settings brim you know one millimeter uh, that's probably at least two passes attached to the print if brim is enabled if you're doing a raft that's like a waffle that's done a few layers below your print to help it stick to a surface if you're having slight issues with a level perfectly level bed and your proximity sensor just isn't quite doing it 100% for you and you really want the print to come out, oftentimes a raft will give you that edge that you need. Like a one layer thickness of raft might be all it takes um, to really give you a clean result. And it could also make removal a little easier because you're removing it from a piece of plastic. But you really got to fine tune the settings to get it to do it well. Um, these are the nominal settings that come with the program. I should also mention G-Code flavor should be Marlin. Um, they kind of combine. This does different codes, but Marlin is what is on our 3D printer Arduino um, that the ramps talks to. So Marlin is important. Extrusion, uh, retraction speed. So that's going to be when it moves, it travels from one spot that it's printing to the next part or to the next area. It retracts at a certain speed, it retracts a certain amount of material. Um, if it's right next to it, it, it won't retract. If it's two millimeters away or 10 millimeters away, it depends how fast your travel is. You can alter that if it's practical. So many unique things. Z-hop means it's gonna lift up after it prints, move over, drop back down, then continue. Um, cut off bottom object, nozzle diameter. That could be important if you change nozzle sizes. Uh, minimize crossing perimeters. There's so many different uh, settings in here. Cooling. Um, this is important. This is what I was saying before, but I was in the wrong spot. Minimum cooling. Um, some of this stuff, like minimum fan, minimum speed for cooling, if it's not going fast enough, um, it thinks that it's saying that it can use more cooling because just moving sideways is going to kind of help create some cooling. So all those are based on the D9 output pins. Um, G codes. This is where you can customize your start code, your end code, if you're doing multiple extruders, um, printing multiple materials. So your start code, you're definitely going to want the G28 command in there. I should have modified all these settings, should have these modifications to them. G28 means home. G29 means auto level, so those are important to be done firsthand. The resting position while it heats up is at 10, 10, 10. Um, this says turn off fan, so they're saying don't turn on the fan while I'm heating up because that's wasting uh, heat, you know, it takes longer. 
it's checking the bed temperature here here it checks the extruder temperature it resets your position of your extruder um, now this is where it checks if your extruder is at temp if, to make sure that it can actually uh, extrude it doesn't do a cold extrusion or something like that alright so that's basically and then your encode returns it to um, no that means turn your power down to zero I don't know, there's, you can modify all this stuff, but for the most part, it should be pretty good. I haven't messed with uh, multiple extruders yet, so that's kind of in the open. Maybe somebody will write something. Maybe I'll get time to. Advanced, um, I don't know. I just leave it combine everything, so I've never really messed with that. Hopefully, that pretty much covers all of the configuration. Um, the next thing we're going to do is quickly go over some of this and what little changes you can make then we're going to do print preview and we are going to actually um, set up a, a print to actually print um, also a little bit on configuration of your printer if it's not connecting to your 3d printer that could be an issue so we'll go over that in a second thanks guys